Admittedly, a one-off video on a puzzle game is a tough sell these days, but Puznik is fairly substantial in terms of quality and fun, and was released at the peak of Puzzle Mania kicked off by Tetris earlier in the 80s. Originally an arcade game published and developed by Taito, Puznik was soon ported to just about every platform in existence back in 1990. In fact, the game is a combination of Tetris, which I covered all the NES versions in this video here, and another lesser known game, Sokuban, popular on PC and Japan where players push crates and boxes around a warehouse to solve puzzles. So what's up with Puznik on the NES? The wonderful thing about Puznik is like many great puzzlers of the time, it's simple yet challenging. The point of the game is that you must rid each map of all the pieces. The way to do this is highlight and drag identical pieces to each other and touch them together. Poof, they disappear. This is pretty simple, and at the start you'll only have a couple of different pieces and only light obstacles to navigate. The wrinkles add on as you go though, for instance, if there are three of the same pieces on the board, you have to touch all three together at the same time. If you touch two together, they'll disappear leaving you with one left over and no way to win, so you'll need to get clever. Different kinds of pieces will be added as you go, usually denoted by a different symbol or color. Failure isn't the end of the world here either. You get a password each time you fail that takes you right to that level, so you won't be asked to repeat any puzzles you've already completed. But you do have a timer, and you have three retries with that timer. You have unlimited continues, but there are 160 puzzles to solve here, so that password feature comes in quite handy. If you're into high scores, you can try for bonuses by completing puzzles under a certain amount of time, or how many blocks you can match at once, but as you might expect, points mean very little in terms of actually finishing all the puzzles. There are multiple ways Puznik tries to trip you up. Some blocks move up and down or left and right for you to push the puzzle pieces on for solving the puzzles. You might have to use those to separate your blocks so they don't touch before you want them to. Timing your piece to land on the moving blocks is less challenging than you might imagine, but the controls are fluid and intuitive for this type of game. But that's just Puznik. There's another game here, Gravnik. Why did Puznik get its name on the title and Gravnik get completely ignored? Was Puzzgrav taken or Grav Puzz? A lot of folks don't know that Puznik is a two-in-one deal on puzzle games and Gravnik is just as fun, if not even a little bit easier. Think of the playing space of Gravnik as you holding these pieces on a board on your lap. And if you tilt the board to the right, all of the pieces slide up against the side. Tilt it forward and the pieces slide upward. You get it. The same concept as Puznik applies here, you want identical pieces to all touch at once in order to disappear them from the board and clear it. The reason this one is easier is because you have no choice than to move all of the pieces at once, so solving each one is just a matter of hitting the right sequence of direction on the d-pad. It's simple, but that's not to say it isn't fun or even a little challenging. The further you go, the more complicated it gets, and I'm always amused at how clever puzzles can get in games like this. Thankfully, Gravnik doesn't have a time limit, but they go by so quickly it doesn't really matter. You do have a fixed number of moves though, so you can't just go sliding the board around all willy-nilly forever. Like Puznik, Gravnik also has a password for getting back to where you left off. Also like Puznik, Gravnik has its own 160 levels. So all combined on this cartridge are 320 pretty solid puzzles. That's a decent value. Unfortunately, there's not much going on for the soundtrack. It makes you really appreciate soundtracks like Dr. Mario and Tetris that have great music for puzzling along to. Puznik has nothing here you'd want to hear on your own. Other than that, if you like puzzle games and have the stamina to beat 320 of them, give Puznik a try. Puznik was ported to a number of systems back in the day, and in fact started on the arcade. You can play it on the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, the PC, the TurboGrafx, the Game Boy, and several more. In fact, in 2003 it was even ported to the PlayStation and the Nokia N-Gage. Well, that does it for Puznik on the NES. And as always, thanks for watching.